Hello everyone. Today I have another video for you for your science syllabus. We will be discussing the first chapter of your syllabus that is food we eat and I will be giving you some more new exercises. Before we start, let us do a recap of the topics that we did in the first part of this chapter. We read about the types of food that we eat and nutrients and how they help our body. We read about the different types of nutrients that is carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. We also read about water and roughage and how it helps in the digestion process. We read about food wastage and steps to prevent food wastage and also some preservation methods. And we also read about a balanced diet. Now, before we start, I know that some of you have a lot of doubts because the questions that were given by me in your previous video do not match the exercises in your book, your new book. So let me tell you why it's like that. The book that you have with you is a new edition of the same book that I am using. New editions are basically the same book but with a few extra elements added to it. The definitions, images, some words may be changed, some new topics may be added. So I want to assure you that whatever has been taught in the previous video is important and is a part of your syllabus. The questions given in that video are important and are relevant to the chapter. Now, in this video, I will be discussing a topic that I did not mention in the previous video, but it will be quite helpful for you if you know this. So, let's get started. The topic that I wanted to discuss is food pyramid. If you remember, one side of a pyramid looks like a triangle. So, I am going to use the shape of this triangle to explain to you what kind of food we should add to our diet and in what quantity. So this is what the food pyramid looks like. Here the pyramid is divided into four groups. The group in the bottom is the biggest group as you can see by the size. The group above that is little more smaller. The group above of that is slightly more smaller and finally on top we have a really small group. So let's start with the biggest group that is the grain group. Grain group basically refers to any type of food that is made from grains like wheat, rice, barley, pulses. So according to this pyramid, this grain group of food items which are made of these grains should take up the biggest portion in our diet followed by fruits and vegetables. You can clearly see that these two groups in the bottom are the biggest groups and therefore they should take up the maximum portion of our diet. They provide us with carbohydrates and proteins and also vitamins and minerals for day to day work. Above the vegetable and fruit group we have the milk and meat group. So you have milk items over here for example cheese, butter, fresh milk, curd and, if, and from the meat group we have fish, meat, eggs etc. And finally on top we have a group where I have written others. Others basically refers to the other food groups that we like to eat. For example, we eat a lot of processed food nowadays like jams, sauces, cheese, milk, meat and other group, other food items should take up a smaller portion in our diet. Let's read this in more detail. A food pyramid shows the amount of nutrients that should be present in a balanced diet. The food shown in the bottom is the larger group. It means we should eat carbohydrates, vegetables and fruits in large amounts. This group contains food like wheat, rice, sugar, potato, sweet fruits and vegetables. As I said, this group contains foods that give us carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins and minerals. Food shown above is the smaller group that means the food groups shown on top. Foods in this group are to be eaten in sufficient amount just enough required for the body. We should not overeat them. This group contains foods like 
milk, butter, cheese, meat, fish, egg, processed food, etc. As we already know, we should not eat too much fatty foods. Otherwise, it gets stored in our body and can make us overweight. Similarly, food items like meat, fish, egg should be eaten in just sufficient amount so that our body is able to digest them properly. When we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, we are already getting a major part of our protein, vitamins and minerals. As I mentioned before, processed foods include foods that are found ready-made in the market, for example, jams, spreads, sauces, butters like peanut butter, almond butter, etc. So these two should be eaten in limited amount. So I hope you understood the concept of the food pyramid and how it helps us to plan a balanced diet. Now, if you remember, we discussed in the previous video that the balanced diet differs from person to person. That means different people need different kinds of balanced diets. Let's see. Children need more protein rich food to grow healthy and strong. We already discussed this in the previous video. We also discussed that adults who do hard physical work need more carbohydrates and fats in their diet. People who are growing old need more vitamin and mineral rich food to fight against diseases. As a person becomes old, their body grows weaker. So they need more vitamins and minerals so that their body is able to fight against diseases easily. With this, we have covered every topic in the first chapter of your science syllabus. Now, I have some more exercises for you to do. The first question here is true and false. Let's solve this together. The first question is, food gives us energy to work. So we started this chapter with this concept only that food gives us energy to work. So the answer is true. People doing hard physical work need more proteins. We just discussed this. People who do hard physical work need more carbohydrates. So this is false. Next, rice is a rich source of carbohydrates. Yes, rice is a very important source of carbohydrates. So this is true. Balanced diet is same for everyone. So you remember we just discussed this. Balanced diet is not the same for everyone. So this statement is false. Roughage is a fatty food. If you remember when we discussed roughage, I told you that roughage actually helps in digestion. Therefore, roughage is not a fatty food. This statement is false. So I have written down the answers for you here so that you can check up on these answers if you want. Let's move on to the next question. Tick the correct answer. Question number one, it needs food. The options are a car, a boat, a dog and a house. Since A, B and D are non-living things, so our answer is a dog. Next, the energy giving food is, now let's see the options, apple, orange, butter and radish. We know that butter is a source of fat and fat is an energy giving food. Therefore, our answer is butter. Sugars are options, proteins, fats, minerals, carbohydrates. We know sugar and starch are two types of carbohydrates. So sugars are carbohydrates. Roughage is found in options, spinach, butter, potato, milk. We know that green leafy vegetables are sources of roughage. So the answer here will be spinach. Once again, I have given you the answers over here. Next question, fill in the blanks. You have been provided with some words which you can use as answers in your fill in the blanks. Let's start. Vitamins and minerals help to fight against. The answer is very easy. Diseases. Dash is an instant energy source. We know that carbohydrates and fats are energy giving food and among these answers here, glucose is a carbohydrate. So the answer is glucose is an instant energy source. Growing children need more amount of dash in food. We already discussed this. Growing children need more amount of protein in food. Dash is the food we eat every day. So the answer will be 
diet diet is the food we eat every day and we should not dash the food the answer is we should not waste the food once again the answers are written over here for you in case you have a doubt now we come to match the following so we have two columns column a and column b and we have four options in each column on in column a we have energy giving food roughage vitamins and minerals and bodybuilding food and in column b we have the sources so let us match them energy giving food amongst spinach potato fish and apple potato is a source of carbohydrate which is an energy giving food so energy giving food will be potato next roughage we already solved this in the tick the correct answer question the answer will be a spinach vitamins and minerals the answer will be apple because we know fruits are a very good source of vitamins and minerals finally bodybuilding food we know fish is a very good source of protein so the answer is c fish once more i have written down the answers here and remember when you solve match the following in your copy or in your book i would prefer that you write the answers like this instead of drawing lines between the columns this way the copy does not look untidy and the answers are very clear now we come to the final question that is answer the questions so here i have listed down the questions one by one let's discuss them what are nutrients name them you will find the answer to this question and the name of the nutrients in the beginning of the chapter to question number 2 why is food containing proteins called bodybuilding food so we already know the answer to this question we know that proteins help our bones and muscles to grow healthy it also helps in repairing our muscles so proteins are called bodybuilding food i hope you will be able to write this answer properly why should we eat a balanced diet we should eat a balanced diet so that our body gets enough amount of all the nutrients present in food food from which groups of food pyramid should be eaten in more amount so we discussed this already the food that is right in the bottom that is the grains group and also the fruit and vegetable group should be eaten in more amount so please try writing the answers but in case you have any doubt you can refer to these ans answers that i have given over here that's all for today thank you